Hey there, it's Michael Morgan here from Lathrop High School, and I'm here to offer you some advice on how to approach the written questions for the College Board's AP History tests. Now, there are lots of good resources and videos about how to write the various written questions for the AP World, AP Euro, and AP US tests. However, I thought I would provide some of the tips that I give my students that I don't really see in many of these other resources. Now, my AP students have a standing average pass rate of over 90%, and most of that separation from the other classes in the United States comes in the written question section. So I thought I'd help provide you with some advice on how to approach and succeed on those various written questions. Now the long essay question is a single choice of three different options that cover all of the various periods, whether it's AP World, Euro, or US, and you have 40 minutes to complete that essay. Much like the other questions, you're going to log the time as you begin so you know when that end is going to come and you can pace whether you have to hurry up or you can go back and edit or add detail. Now there are six possible points for the LEQ, and while I will explain them later in this video, I'm actually going to start with my first and biggest piece of advice, and it is simply this. Ignore the language and explanations given to you by the College Board in their rubric. Now, I realize that might be a very controversial point, as I'm sure many of you go to the College Board site for the rubric, or perhaps received it from your teachers, and went through and tried to analyze what all these points are and how you get them. Ignore it completely. It's a bunch of fluff that's meant to bolster the academic appeal of the actual AP test itself. All you need to know how to do is how to write a good historical essay, and I will explain how to do that and how, in the most simplest way, get those six points for that LEQ. I will say it again, ignore the language and the explanations provided by the College Board for the rubric and how to get the points. I will tell you how to get them most simply as I have for my class for the past few years, and we have done extremely well on the written questions. Much like I mentioned in my how to get a five on the AP test, I'm going to tell you that the key to doing well on these essays is, of course, providing evidence and explaining that evidence. But to do that, you have to understand the key concepts, which is a giant list of concepts across time in history that you're required to know. You have to know examples for those pieces, those key concepts, as well as how they arrange themselves and compare across the various periods of chronological time provided by the College Board. Now, to simplify it, the six points for an LEQ come for one point through contextualization, one point for a valid thesis, two points for evidence use, and two points for analysis and reasoning. Now you could read the College Board rubric and try to figure out or decipher what they are actually asking for, but I'm going to tell you that right now. Now the context, which is worth one point, is roughly speaking going to be the background for the topic of your essay that will most likely be going and most logically be going in the introduction paragraph before your thesis statement. The thesis statement is roughly speaking an answer to that question, so it's asking for causes and responses. Your thesis statement should be one to two sentences following the context in your introduction paragraph that directly provides causes and responses to whatever is in question. You also earn two points through evidence that of course is providing specific examples or pieces of evidence through history. That means things you can point to in history that began, whether it's a person, an event, an idea, whatever it is, that is relevant to your argument. So using valid specific pieces of evidence as well as explaining how those are continuities and changes or how there are causes and responses or whatever it is that you're talking about, that is how you get those two evidence pieces. Additionally, discussing the changes in continuities or similarities and differences or causes and responses, that is how you get one of the two points for your analysis and reasoning. So specifically discussing what those things are throughout your body paragraphs, that is going to get you at least one point of that analysis and reasoning. The other one is going to come from connecting the topic of the essay to another time or another region in history, and that is how you get those six points most simply. Now there are lots of different options and explanations for how to get these points provided by the College Board but those are the six most simple ways to get all of the points for your LEQ as well as writing a good thorough historical essay. To get the context point, in the introduction paragraph, you're going to focus three to five sentences on setting the context. And to know what the context is, you're going to look at the question. And whatever the theme of the question is, whether it's political or economic or social or something else, once you identify the theme, you can then provide the context for what led up to the theme that's in the essay question. So for example, if it's a long essay question about the emergence of capitalism in the 18th and 19th centuries, 
you would, of course, identify what that theme is. And if it's talking about capitalism, the theme is economics. So what I should do for my context point is in my introduction paragraph, I should provide some information about how the economic activities and theories of the time led up to capitalism. So I could include things about the enclosure movement, uh, the prominence of private property, the disillusion of guilds in Western Europe, uh, and even commercialization, which is, of course, selling things for profit. All of these are relevant contextual examples that provide some background as to how capitalism emerged in the 18th and 19th centuries. Now, thesis statements can be very tricky for students to understand, and the most simple way I can provide an explanation to you is to say a thesis statement should be preferably three points, so it matches up with your body paragraphs, all three of them. A thesis statement should be, roughly speaking, an answer to the question. So you should be able to read the question, whatever it is, whether it's causes, continuities and changes, similarities and differences, whatever it is, you should be able to read your thesis statement and line it up with the question as a generic or a general answer. Now, you don't need to get too specific in the thesis statement. You should, it should be clear what your, the subjects that you're going to talk about are, but you should be able to look at that thesis statement and, and tell yourself, or at least feel like, it answers that question completely, provides both similarities and differences, or provides both continuities and changes, or provides both causes and responses, whatever is actually in question. And that's the best way you can sort of know you have a a valid thesis statement is, does it answer the question? So the rest of my essay will be describing or explaining how that thesis statement is correct, right? Providing evidence and explaining those, those pieces of evidence to it. But you should be able to look back at the question and feel like that your thesis statement is a one or two sentence answer that you need to elaborate on in the body paragraphs. Now the body paragraph should ideally line up with exactly what your thesis statement is. The topic sentence for each beginning portion of the body paragraph should be one point of your thesis statement, and the rest of that body paragraph should be filled with evidence and explanations of that evidence and why your answer is correct. When I say a specific piece of evidence, I mean a piece of evidence that actually advances your argument. It's got to be specific and identifiable in history, whether there's a person, an event, or an idea, but it has to be relevant. It's not a random historical trivia essay. All right, so if you're talking about the emergence of capitalism, maybe you're talking about England, you can't just randomly throw in Henry VIII because he was a king of England. It has to be something related to capitalism capitalism in actual England. So if you wanted to use the enclosure movement or Cat's Rebellion or something along those lines that's actually related to capitalism in England, that would be fine. However, throwing in Henry VIII randomly just because he was a monarch of England, that is not going to actually advance your essay and that will not count as a valid piece of historical evidence. Now in your body paragraphs, you should also specifically be stating and explaining how things are continuities and changes or similarities and differences or causes and responses. And that is how you get one of the two analysis and reasoning points. What Whatever the actual historical skill in question is, whether it's causation, comparison, or continuity and change over time, stick to explaining that specifically in your thesis and body paragraphs, as well as providing both. Don't just provide similarities and no differences or just changes and no continuities. You should have both in your thesis and you should explain both specifically in your body paragraphs. Finally, your conclusion paragraph should be where you are trying to get that last point of your analysis and reasoning. Now, a lot of people use the conclusion to just summarize their main points and that's a garbage way to use your conclusion paragraph. The way you should be using it is to analyze how this topic is connected in history or similar to other topics in history. So for example, for capitalism, I could connect the ideas of capitalism uh, to other economic responses that attempted to address the problems of capitalism itself, such as Marxism or socialism in the 19th century. That would be me connecting this idea uh, to following events or to similar events in another time or another region. And that is the simplest and most efficient way to use your conclusion paragraph and get that final point for analysis and reasoning. Now, there are obviously many videos on how to write an LEQ, and hopefully this provided you with some unique perspectives on how to more simply approach the LEQ. However, if you are looking for more resources on how to answer each specific type of LEQ or tutoring or the structures and formats I give my students to do well on the LEQ and DBQs, uh, feel free to check out my website at morganapteaching.com, which is linked in the description below. Hopefully this helps, and good luck on the AP test.